So about six years ago, I recorded a video about repeated eigenvalues, and this particular problem that I did gave us a full set of eigenvectors, meaning in a 3x3 case, we ended up getting three eigenvectors. And somebody on YouTube emailed me and said, hey, can you do a problem where you don't get a full set of eigenvectors? So here's an example. So this example is a little bit harder than the previous case. The first thing that we need to do, as always, is to find a minus lambda i and take the determinant. There's a minus lambda i, and taking a determinant gives me this line here. And you might have an instinct to multiply out this first bit. And while that's normally a good instinct, notice right away that there's a 5 minus lambda on both of these terms. That suggests that we can factor out a 5 minus lambda from this. If we do factor that out from this first term, we end up with, and if we factor that 5 minus lambda out from the second term, we end up with, which is a nice form to have because it's kind of pre-factored. Now the minus 4 and the plus 4 cancel, and we just have three factors here. So there we go, we have a negative lambda times a 5 minus lambda squared. That gives us an eigenvalue of 0 and a repeated eigenvalue of 5. Now I think this repeated eigenvalue is what we're interested in here, so let's go through that first. If we plug lambda equals 5 into this formula, a minus lambda i times our eigenvector equals a 0 vector, we get this line right here, and notice that I am naming our eigenvector abc. What the system of equations gives us is is this right here and you'll notice from the first equation or the third equation that right off the bat we are given that b equals zero that is not a free variable b must be zero well plugging b equals zero into this middle equation gives us a plus 2c equals zero you'll notice right off the bat that this gives us one free variable we can choose either a or c to be our free variable i'll choose c equals one as our free variable and that is going to give us a equals negative two okay then so we have an eigenvector this eigenvector is abc which we are saying is negative 2, 0, 1. Now this is all well and good, but we actually need a second eigenvector from this eigenvalue because this eigenvalue was repeated twice. Now for that, we're going to find what we might call a generalized eigenvector. This is an eigenvector that has slightly different rules. Whereas our eigenvector x had to follow this equation up here, our generalized eigenvector is going to follow this equation. In this formula, our generalized eigenvector is going to be called k, and this x on the right-hand side of the equation is the eigenvector that we found earlier. In other words, we have this formula right here to solve for k. Now this a minus lambda i is the same a minus lambda i from the previous part of this problem. So we'll put the a minus lambda i back in there, and k, I'll call that a1, b1, c1. All right, so this system of equations gives us the following. And you will notice right off the bat that either equation 1 or equation 3 gives us a b1 value of 1 half. Plugging that b1 value into the second equation gives us this formula right here, which we can rewrite. Okay, and now we have another free variable here. We can feel free to choose a1 or c1 to be whatever we like. We have many options. It's not uncommon to just choose a1 or c1 equals 0, but just for fun, maybe I will choose a1 equals 1 half. If we do make that choice and we plug that a1 equals 1 half back into this equation, we can subtract 1 half, we get c1 equals 1. This ultimately gives us our generalized eigenvector, which we're calling k, as 1 half, 1 half, 1. And you very well may be wondering, what are we supposed to do with that generalized eigenvector? Well, the answer is we have some forms for solutions to our original problem based on our eigenvector and our generalized eigenvector, and they look like this. Solution one is pretty typical. We just take our regular eigenvector and multiply it by e to the lambda t. Solution two looks a little bit different. We take our first solution and multiply it by t, but then we add to that the generalized eigenvector times e to the lambda t. So I'm gonna give myself a little bit of space here to write this out. In this problem, our first solution is negative 2, 0, 1 times e to the 5t. And our second solution is going to be negative 2, 0, 1 times t, e to the 5t, plus our generalized eigenvector times e to the 5t. Okay, that looks pretty messy, but we can get messier because we're supposed to write out a general solution typically. And the general solution is just going to be c1, y1, plus c2, y2, plus c3 times whatever we get for that third eigenvector corresponding to that third eigenvalue. I think it was 0. That's going to look like this. Okay, there's the general solution. I even went ahead and solved for the eigenvector associated with the eigenvalue 0. So there's a little invisible e to the 0t over here. Take a good look at that. I'm going to scroll back to the beginning so you can see all of this work again. Also, up here in yellow, I scribbled out just really roughly how I solved for that third eigenvector. It may not be clear, but hopefully you're pretty good at finding regular old eigenvectors. So let me scroll through this work again. Feel free to hit pause in your browser because I know these videos go pretty fast, uh, and take a look at the work wherever you need to look.
All right, thanks for watching, everybody. If you have any questions, uh, feel free to leave them in the comments. Or if you have any specific problems you'd like me to do, <laughs> I'm happy to take some requests. Uh, so I hope this video helped you out. And if it did, uh, check out some of the other ones on my channel.